Hello and welcome. This video will take you through some of the benefits of Jaguar's range of plug-in hybrid and fully electric vehicles for company car drivers and fleet operators. You'll be aware that from 2030, all new cars sold in the UK will have to be zero emission or have a high level of electrification. Between now and then, we'll see an acceleration towards electrified vehicles, and Jaguar has fully embraced this future and committed to a fully electric lineup from 2025. But there is no need to wait. Jaguar already offers both plug in hybrid and fully electric options, and there are a number of advantages to adopting the technologies available now. They offer a great driving experience, the potential for financial savings, and the contribution they make to improved air quality can be part of your company's commitment to environmental responsibility. In front of me, I have the multi-award winning iPACE. Designed from the ground up as a fully electric vehicle, every element of its aerodynamic design allows the car to slice cleanly through the air for optimized range and stability. And with instant torque, its ultra-efficient performance is matched with exhilarating acceleration. We also offer E-PACE and F-PACE plug-in hybrid models. Jaguar's SUV siblings offering a combination of looks, practicality and dynamic driving. Both have recently benefited from an extensive model refresh, boasting interior enhancements, exterior updates and the introduction of Jaguar's new state-of-the-art infotainment system, PIVI Pro. But let's not be coy. Regardless of all the latest features and must-have technologies, all fleet vehicles are subject to financial scrutiny. So let's start with the financial benefits of going electric. On the face of it, plug-in hybrid and battery electric vehicles appear more expensive than models running purely on petrol or diesel. However, the reduced running costs and taxation benefits can often outweigh the higher purchase price. The key to the tax savings is in the CO2 emissions that the vehicle achieves. This is typically over 100 grams per kilometre for petrol or diesel cars. The Jaguar F-PACE and E-PACE PHEV offer a substantial reduction in this figure, crucially coming in under 50 grams per kilometre. For companies, Current rules allow for just 6% of the value of a vehicle with emissions over 50 grams per kilometre to be written down against tax as a capital allowance. PHEV models with emissions below 50 grams per kilometre enjoy a higher rate of 18% per year, and as a fully electric vehicle, the Jaguar I-PACE offers zero CO2 emissions, meaning companies can write down 100% of the full value of the car against tax in the first year even if the vehicle is being purchased on a contract plan. Combined with stronger predicted residual rates for electrified vehicles, in many cases, this difference alone will offset the increased retail price of electrified vehicles. And if you're an employee receiving a company car, benefiting kind rates are much lower on electrified vehicles. Compared with a typical cost for a petrol or diesel car of between 30 and 37%, Jaguar PHEVs can offer benefiting kind rates from just 11%, so monthly company car tax payments for drivers will be less than half the cost of driving petrol or diesel. These are the sort of savings that can feel like a pay rise. And fully electric cars like the I-PACE are lower still. From April 2021, the benefiting kind rate for I-PACE is just 1%. It should be noted that zero emission vehicles are exempt from the London congestion charge until 2025. At 15 pounds a day, this could represent a saving of 300 pounds a month if you drive into London every day. And you'll be helping to improve the air quality in the city. The financial benefits are further buoyed by the lower running costs. PHEV's official MPG figures are extremely impressive. In all honesty, real-world figures for PHEV vary more than for any other type of vehicle and depend greatly on usage. With an electric range of just over 30 miles, if your journeys between charging periods are less than that, potentially you might never start the engine. Costs for running on electric are about 4 or 5 pence a mile, compared with 15 to 20 pence per mile for petrol or diesel. So if you currently fill your car up once or twice a month, you could cut your running costs by a third. 
If you can charge at work as well as home, longer commutes can be completed purely on electric power. Currently, there is no benefit in kind taxation on electric charging at work. The all-electric I-PACE has running costs of between 4 and 5 pence per mile and an official range figure of 292 miles. Now again, this is dependent on usage, but even driving at motorway speeds, it should still offer at least 200 miles from 100% charge. And Watcar's real-world range test produced a figure of over 250 miles. A full charge at home would cost about £13. Charging away from home on fast chargers, the cost varies, but reckon on it being about twice as much. Even at three times more, it would still be cheaper per mile than filling with petrol. Alongside the financial arguments, I think it's reasonable to say that there is trepidation amongst drivers about adopting what feels like a new technology. As an electric car owner myself, I researched relentlessly, absorbed all the knowledge that I could, and in the end, when it was delivered, it was more similar than it was dissimilar. There is anxiety over range, where you will charge, how long they'll last, even questions about whether they're really more environmentally friendly. So I'd like to take some time just to explain how they work, how they drive, and how it is living with an electrified vehicle. The first consideration is that you'll need to plug it in and charge it somewhere. Ideally, this would be a driveway, but you may also be able to plug in and charge at work. There are government grants that contribute towards the cost of installing chargers at both home and business premises, bringing the cost down to around £500, depending on supplier. Jaguar have recommended installer partnerships to make this step as simple as possible. These chargers are really simple. Just connect the power socket, and then connect the car and it starts charging. It won't overcharge, so you can leave it plugged in all the time and let the battery management systems do their thing. This also allows for remote climate capability. Just press a button on the phone app and the car will de-ice itself and warm the interior in winter and cool down in summer so it's more comfortable to get in. This type of charging uses AC power at a rate of seven kilowatts. PHEV batteries will fully recharge in about two and a half hours. The 90 kilowatt hour battery in iPACE will take 13 hours to fully recharge, so just leave it overnight. And of course, mostly, you won't be fully recharging iPACE, just replacing the power that you used that day. The recharging cables lock themselves in place while charging, and it won't allow you to drive when it's connected, so no worries about forgetting and driving off while still tethered to the wall. What I love about this is not having to go to fuel stations every 500 miles or so. Every morning the car is fully recharged, ready to go. Jumping into the F-Pace PHEV, when you press the start button, the dashboard will light up, but you won't hear the engine fire up. You pull away silently under electric power. And as long as you don't require hard acceleration, it stays that way. When you do require a little more power, the engine starts up and there's a seamless transfer to power from the petrol engine. And both powertrains can work together for a combined output of 404 horsepower. Now, people often don't realise this about plug-in hybrids. They're usually quicker than their petrol siblings. 0-60 in F-Pace PHEV is just five seconds. You can really enjoy the drive. Power delivery is smooth and quiet while cruising, and, and when you move to overtake, there's a characterful growl from the engine. There is a little extra weight from the batteries, which you feel in the corners, but the car never feels unbalanced, and there's plenty of grip. You've got standard all-wheel drive, making sure you can deliver all 404 horsepower to the tarmac when you need it. There are three different drive modes to make the most of the electric power available. Default setting is hybrid, where the car will automatically choose which mode to use. If you're on a longer journey, you might choose save mode. Now this will lock the car into using just petrol power so that you can save the electric charge for zero emission driving when you reach urban areas later in the journey. When you reach the outskirts of the town, you can select EV mode to direct the car to use just electric power for quiet progress with zero exhaust pollution.
whenever you slow down, the car can recover the kinetic energy to recharge the battery. You can see on the display how it switches between using battery power when I accelerate and then feeding power back in whenever I slow down or drive downhill. So overall then, it feels like a regular car to drive, albeit a really nice one with a surprising turn of speed. The best compliment that I can pay it actually is that it feels like a Jaguar F-Pace. You don't have to worry about long journeys because you can always top up with petrol whenever you want to, but on your day-to-day -day commute, you can see great efficiency from the electric range. The latest update has brought a fantastic mix of textures and materials into the cabin, all sitting alongside the latest technology. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are standard. If PHEVs feel like an enhanced version of a petrol car, it's fair to say that all electric cars like the I-PACE can feel like quite a different kind of beast. Uh, looking at the external styling here, it's won a slew of design awards, and it still feels fresh and exciting without self-consciously announcing itself as an EV. It's just a great looking car. Again, when you start the car, there's no engine, obviously, and there's no gearbox either. So you select drive direction just with a simple button push and then silently pull away. Now, all the best luxury cars offer smooth power delivery, a quiet cabin, a confident acceleration. These things are baked into the technology of electric cars, so cruising in I-Pace is relaxing and serene, but put your foot down <laughs> and the power just pins you to your seat. 700 newton meters of torque is available from standstill. 0 to 60 is just four and a half seconds, but 0 to 30 is faster than any combustion engine, and that feeling never gets old. You can probably tell I really like this car. Now when I lift off the throttle, there's a noticeable braking effect as the electric motor turns into a generator and starts recovering kinetic energy. When you touch the brakes, this braking force increases, applying a deceleration of 0.4 g before using the disc brakes. EVs are known to put out much less brake dust, and the brakes last far longer before you have to replace them. In fact, iPACE is programmed to occasionally apply just light pressure on the discs to remove any corrosion. The navigation system works with you to eliminate any anxiety about range. Just input a destination. Hey Jaguar, take me to Edinburgh Castle. And if there's not enough charge in the battery to get you there, the system will highlight this and suggest charging points along the way. It will also calculate how long you need to charge. If all you need is another 30 miles, you don't need to fully recharge. 15 minutes will be fine. Charging at home uses AC power at 7 kilowatts. Away from home, you have access to DC charging stations, which are much quicker. They start at 50 kilowatts. This station just off the M40 at Banbury has just given me a charge at 100 kilowatts. And that's fast enough to take high pace from a zero to 80% charge in just 45 minutes. When you arrive at a public charging station, it can feel daunting. There's a lot of different suppliers, and some of them require you to have an app on your phone. Others are happy with just contactless payment. You simply tap your credit card on the outside of the charging station to begin. And that's certainly more common for the newer charging stations being installed. Even with chargers that need an app, though, it's generally not that complicated. You simply log in, uh, you select the charge that you want to use, and most of them will use location data to highlight the one that you're closest to, follow the instructions, and then your car will begin to charge. With DC charging stations, the cable is always attached to the charging point, so you just need to plug it in. Because it's DC, you need to uncover the two high capacity pins in the charging socket. And then after a brief period where the charging station communicates with the car, charge begins to flow. Now you can monitor the state of charge on both the dashboard and the remote app on your phone. There can be issues with charging stations not working, so I would recommend you don't wait until the final opportunity to charge. But the car system can advise you on which stations are in use or out of service, so you can plan ahead. The biggest point to make is that you probably won't be doing this very often. It's only when you have to travel more than 200 miles in one day that you'll have to think about charging anywhere other than your own home. So if you started each morning with half a tank of fuel in your car, how often would you visit a petrol station? It's the biggest thing people worry about, but actually it's quite a small part of the experience of owning an electric car. The other thing to say is that I know people who have electric cars who don't have the facility to charge at home, but do live near rapid chargers or whose councils have installed on street chargers or who can charge at the car park at work. Now, if the average commute is actually only around 30 miles, that may mean that the car only needs charging once a week. Ultimately, 
Of the thousands of people I've spoken to who own electrified cars, I'm yet to meet one who would willingly go back to petrol or diesel. Certainly, that's how I feel. Whether you're an enthusiastic driver, concerned about urban air quality, or simply looking for an option that's more fuel efficient and more tax efficient, Jaguar's range of electrified SUVs are leading the charge towards motoring's future. For more information on Jaguar's electrified models, search Jaguar Electric and follow the links to our website.